What you don't hate, you can't conquer. If you don't hate poverty, you can't conquer it. If you pamper poverty, it will tamper with your destiny. Many say, I don't like to be poor, but they don't really hate poverty. Poverty is wickedness. Hear this and hear me well. When I became born again and I came here, I was a member here, so don't think I just, I'm still part of here until Jesus comes. When I came and I was in church one day, and my father put his hand like this, his hand like this. He said, listen, I can't be poor. I said, I can someone talk like this. He said, I'm not depending on you. I'm telling you what I know. I said, ah. I've never had someone speak that way. And in Bible school, he taught us and others taught us, for him to teach you prosperity, you should believe that you will never be poor. But that they taught you does not mean you know it. Poverty was still there. And I knew it has not left. So I told myself one truth. You have not known it. So after Bible school, I picked his book, Breaking Financial Hardship, sat with it for seven days. After Bible school one year, the one you did three weeks, two weeks now, and I ate to a point I got my own personal revelation because you don't drive with another man's headlamp. And I said, I can see the secret why my father would say nothing can make him. And the covenant is superior to any economic challenge. This same God will open it up to you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the gospel of Jesus has two parts. The person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. The person of Jesus guarantees your heaven. His principles guarantees your success and prosperity. He took his son, but he left his book. Many have accepted his person. But they toy with his principles. So they cannot be principals to so deal with principalities. You hear me? He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Joshua 1, 8. For thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now, your success is not in the hands of God anymore. You determine it. He said, you shall make your way, not God, prosperous, you, and have good success. So it's no longer God's work. God has done everything. If you are poor today, the devil is not your problem. Because you are not the only one who is pursuing. He has pursued others and they succeeded. You will succeed likewise. <laughs> now hear me. It is God's desire that you prosper. God wants you and I to prosper so that we can carry out his great commission on the earth. Without prosperity, the gospel cannot spread. I want to get very angry with poverty. I don't think you have ever seen poverty. That's why you're playing with it. If poverty has ever visited your family, you will react. Because do you know when you are poor, even your dressing you think does not fit you. Have you been poor and after dressing up, you say, look at me very well. Are you sure this cloth is fine? It's fine, but you have... <laughs> it's not the devil. The poverty has made you to think that even people looking at you are seeing poverty in you. But because you have come to Shiloh, you will never be identified with the poor. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. God wants you to enjoy life. He doesn't want you to endure life. He said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So redemption is for you to enjoy life. 
God wants to be prosperous so you can provide for your family. You can be a blessing to people. Now hear this and hear me well. Men stay poor because they can't trust the character of God. The reason people are poor, they don't trust who God is. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23 verse 19. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Had he spoken, shall not make it good? If God has said anything, then don't doubt him. It pains him when you doubt him. It gladdens him when you trust him. We trust the natural financial system. Someone says, a bank said to me, if I put in this money, they can give me 5%. So I'm going to deposit money. That's why some of you even became victims of wonder banks that just took your money and you are gone. You trust them, but you can't trust God. God who spoke to you say, ha, I don't know. It's only in the kingdom of God the Yabu say, I don't have money. But if they're here in the world, they are, they are giving their 20%, he will borrow money to go and give. And most of you, even the one you borrowed, they took it and the money went off. All the wonder banks, you know their names. It's not from me, we hear the names. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> hear me and hear me well. No matter where you are in any part of the world, you can prosper. The richest churches today on earth are all in Nigeria. And you know, here at the headquarters, and other ones I can't mention now. Listen, people of God, they say, God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, including the nation where you're watching from, in Acts 10, 34, 35, he said, now I perceived that God is no respecter, you open his mind, of persons. In every nation, including the nation where you are, even if you're watching from Chad or Haiti, he says, no respecter of persons. He said, there's no difference between the Greek and the Jew. Romans 10, verse 12. There's no difference between anybody. Now, hear me. Don't live where you are. You have heard it over and over. The Abu will hear and we still think that it, our father is joking. Don't live where you are to somewhere. I'm going to wash plate in the name of your traveling. Except God told you. Because wherever you are, you can't take an alligator from Nigeria and take him to the UK and become a crocodile. If you are failing here, go to UK, you still fail. Nations, he said, does not make people. It's people that make nations. <laughs> Hear me, people of God. We all have equal opportunity on earth. If, if Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 9. The entire earth, everyone says, moreover, the profit of the earth is not for few people, it's for all of us. May your own portion be delivered to you. <laughs> and for men and women, the same opportunity. Galatians 3, 28, you can read that later. Now hear me. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Hope you know one of the things you are redeemed from is poverty. Sin, Natural, untimely death, and poverty. That you might enjoy the blessing of Abraham. So to now remain in poverty, you are saying redemption is not real. Because you believe you have redeemed from sin. Then why are you still poor? Because he has redeemed you from poverty. But when it comes to prosperity, he has given you principles in this book. Like sin, you have to confess once, and accept Jesus Christ, but prosperity is not so. You have to know it and apply the principles. So I hear. Now, there are three types of people in every society, including the church. In every church, you have three sets of people. One, those who depend on people to always help them. This kind of people, nothing you preach in this world that can make you come out of poverty. 
You find such persons in the Bible, and one typical example is the man called Lazarus. Lazarus fell into this category in Luke chapter 16, 20, 21. And there was a certain man, beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at, the gate, at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs that which fell from the rich man's table, which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dust came and licked his sores. This category of people, you hear them say, well, I have my brother and he's going to help me. You want to help somebody. The moment you fall into this category, let them preach all the messages in this world, you will never prosper because your mentality is already wrong. You have a perverse way of thinking. You believe that you can never come out of poverty, that you, all the days of your life, you have to depend on somebody to help you. That's a dangerous way to reason. The second set of people are those who talk about the happenings around. They are always talking about the prosperity of others. Do you know that man is prosperous? Even in church now, they will talk about other people. They don't create wealth. This kind of people, even if you give them money, they waste it because they don't have value for wealth. They can spend without multiplying money. They belong to the class of the average. And that class, God hates it because God said, that shall be above only. God never made provision for average. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13. To be average is against scriptures. He said, thou shall be above only. Not optional. Such people all, they just keep talking about events. They never talk about the world. And then the third set of people are the kingdom investors. The kingdom what? They are kingdom promoters. They go for ideas to create wealth from God's word. They are very attentive to the word of God that will change their lives. They are the wealthy. They may not have money right now, but they know where they are going. And you'll be among such persons in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, how to engage the covenant power of wealth? How do I engage it? Now, hear this. If I have a car and it's very fine, I come in the morning, and I say, look at my car. This is, a, this is a good car, a Rolls Royce. The key is with me. And I just turn it on, press the throttle. Will the car move? Until I engage the gear. Otherwise, I'll just be making a move. The car will be on the same point. You will never gain motion if you don't put to use the things I'm about to share with you. Until you engage the gear, that car will never move. It will be motionless. So also, until you begin to put the things you have heard, your life will remain at the same spot. That will not be your portion. So how do I engage the covenant power if I want to enjoy kingdom wealth? Number one is love for God. The difference between the love of God and the love for God, they are not the same. The love of God is the one he loved us. He said the love of God has been shared abroad in your heart. The love for God is the one you have to demonstrate towards him. We mix it. The love of God, God has already loved us. Yeah, the Holy Ghost has shared the love of God in our heart. Romans 5.5. 5. But love for God is the one you have to demonstrate towards God. Like the one that our past speaker just talked about going for soul winning. That one is love for God. Now hear me. He said, Thou shalt love the Lord. I'm reading Mark 12.30. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And then Mark added something, with all thy strength. Matthew did not use strength, but Mark says strength. For this is the first commandment. You must love God with everything, including your money, because that is your strength. Any love that does not involve your money is fake. Look.
Listen. The proof of love is the passion to give. Let me say this to you. Okay. To all of you who are married. Can a woman say her husband ever love her who is a stingy man? Not one woman. If any woman say, my husband loves me, his hand is free. Because where there is no finance, there can never be romance. Are you hearing me? Any woman you hear in the world, my husband loves me so much. He's not, no stingy man with a wife. They said, don't mind that my husband. Very stingy. So also, you can't tell your, you love God. And then when it comes to your pocket, you say, no, God knows I don't have. Check your love, oh. Yeah, hear this and hear me well. For you to enjoy covenant worth, I'm not going to say many things because here yeah, is where I learned everything. I'm still learning. If I tell you, there's no day I don't listen to him, so there's no point. I don't it is. There's no day. As he get the tapes, you don't know. There's nothing you preach that I don't, I don't listen to. As you're hearing it, I'm hearing it. Is there any copyright law? Okay, there's no copyright law for Bible. And it's my father, so there's no copyright law there. If I'm getting results, anybody who wants to find, find out, that is his own business. <laughs> now, listen carefully. For instance, I can't say I love God with my strength, and I'm struggling to tight. <laughs> Something's wrong somewhere. Something's wrong? Tithing is simple a demonstration of obedience to God. While my giving is actually a demonstration of my love for God. You don't love God when you pay tithe. Because tithe is his own. You have not started demonstrating love with tithe. So for a Christian to be struggling to pay tithe, ah, huh? You have not started at all. For God so loved the world. What did he do? No, he sang. He preached. He sat on a chair and was copying note. For God so loved the world, he gave. And Ephesians 5 1 said, We be imitators of God. As little children. His eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. They are saying that to the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that what? You will be the next wonder to your world. <laughs> Everywhere. Read your When God said this man loves him. This one loves me. Abraham loved God. We saw that he took Isaac. Solomon loved the Lord. In First Kings chapter 3. He went and gave sacrifice. Tight is fixed, which all know, except you are coming to church for the first time to Shiloh. Tight is 10% of your income, which I won't go into it, because when you come to tight, people ask questions, is it gross or net? When we ask somebody, ask such questions, tell him, my friend, go away. When someone doesn't want to pay, say, am I going to pay gross or net? I say, go and find out. You go and find out. Let me say this to you, Malachi 3, verse 10. So that shall bring all, not some of your ties, to the store that be meet my house. I put me not here. We don't open the windows of heaven. You know why? If you don't tight, you don't have a foundation for prosperity. In fact, you are not, you are not the one God says who will bless. You are out of the way. And when God tells you to sow, every time he tells you to sow, he has an harvest in mind for you. Because as long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not what? And our giving is the proof of our faith. When a seed leaves your hand, you have these people of God, it does not leave your life. It goes into your future for God to multiply and give it back to you. Your seed is actually a photograph of your faith. 
Because every time you give to God, you are saying, God, I know you are not a man that you should lie. You said to me, as long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease, I don't doubt you. Your economic system can't fail. So I know if I give, you must give it back to me. It shows that you are not doubting what God has said. God will never expect you to give what he has not given to you in the first place. If God says to you, give, he has given you something. He never asked Abraham to give him a son until he gave him a son. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where you are now, start from where you are. The first offering we ever had that brought us out of poverty as a family was 50 naira. So it's not the amount. Start from where you are and remain faithful. You rise from one level to another. Somebody's story will soon change. Yeah. Hear me before I go further. Titan can be likened to a man who has a farm. You have a vast land. Now the vast land, you want to plant. If you fence that land so that there will be no encroachment, that is Titan. But that does not mean crops will grow. Is that true? But there will be no encroachment. Now, you have to plant. The planting is the offerings. But many of us, we give offerings, we don't tithe. So there's nothing protecting us, so there's heavy invasion. And some of us, we give tithing, but no offering, so it's lopsided. The two must go hand. God treasures every giver. The quality of your seed determines the quality of your harvest. And the only way you can overcome greed is to be a giver. But many of us, in giving, some of us, we pay tithe, we give offerings, but why is it not producing? Because before we even give, we have started complaining. Since I have come to this church, they say, Shiloh sacrifice, I've given. They say, we should give for a bus, I've given. You are saying it in your room, oh. They say, this one, I've given. I don't know what is even happening to you now. Is that woo, 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 that is causing it? <laughs> you have complained, you have murmured as if God is a tax master. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, God is, loves a cheerful word. Many of us, we give, we also we are impatient. We are what? Impatient. We, we, what that? The day that you are hungry does not mean if you plant something today, you can't uproot it. Even if you are hungry, will you uproot it that day? So the day you plant, not the day you are vest. You have to be patient. You can't go uproot, say now, I've put corn, now I'm hungry. Go no, no, it must grow. So be patient. I got to Hebrews 10, verse 36, Galatians 6, 9. It says, And let us not be willing well doing, but let not be willing well doing, but in due season we shall reap if we faint. And then yesterday with so much was said about words, so I will not do it too much. Wrong use of words. Proverbs 12, verse 14, Proverbs 13, verse 2. You shall have whatever you said. Mark 11, 23. You know, most of us, after we give, they say, come, in our church, they say we should not talk like that. But you know, you, I can confide in you. Come. Let me tell you what is the problem. Things are very hard, though. <laughs> but in our church, they say we should not say so, but you know, you, that thing you are talking is a problem you have. You know, you know, you know, Papa said you must confess that, but for you, I will tell you how it is now. I'll tell you how it is. These are very hard to, for church. We say, where you call it, say it's well, or it's well. Inside house. All those things are the problem where things are not working. Stop saying the wrong things. Stop saying what? Because you have this. After all the seed you have sown, the final bus stop is here. But hear this before I go to the second thing. Many of us are good givers. 
we give, we do everything. But in the midst of economic challenge, we can't prosper. During the meltdown, many suffered. Why? How come Abraham prospered in famine? Isaac prospered in famine. Jacob prospered in hardship. Joseph prospered. They had one common denominator. Joseph could prosper in a strange land. If you read Genesis 41, 38 to 41, Pharaoh said, there's no one as discreet, as wise as thou art. So come and rule this nation. They were all problem solvers. Number two, covenant key, be a problem solver. We are created to solve problems on earth. Everything created is a solution to a specific problem on the earth. Your ears hear. Your eyes see. Your mind thinks. Are you hearing me now? Everything. The minister of the gospel solves spiritual problems. Your mother solves emotional problems. That's why every family... Children are closer to mothers when they have emotional problem. The lawyer solves legal. And every problem you solve brings you money. Money is available everywhere. Because there is problem to solve everywhere. And the more problems, the more money. The more problems you solve, the wealthier you become. For instance, Nigeria, where we are transmitting from to the entire world, has too many problems. Nigerians are traveling out. Foreigners are coming in. Why? They can see what Nigerians can see. Every problem is money. And covenant children should be able to see brighter than unbelievers. May your eyes be open from today. <laughs> because problems are the bad place for common promotion. Daniel was promoted when he saw problem for Nebuchadnezzar, for the king. Joseph was promoted when he saw problem for Pharaoh. Your promotion is coming. So stop discussing problems. Start looking for opportunities to solve them. That's where your prosperity is. People will only look for you when you are able to solve their problems. So look around you, the way you're living, the town you are, your immediate environment, there's always a problem to solve. I was in Enugu for a crusade, and I was talking to them and I said, Enugu is one of the states in the southeast of Nigeria. They don't have water in Enugu. 80% of Enugu use tea today. They take water because they say they have coal. So I smile. As Israel is inside and they have water. And somebody said they don't have water. So going to open water factory now in Enugu makes you a millionaire. Yes, somebody did not see it. And someone in Enugu is traveling to go to somewhere to go and wash plate. <laughs> Everywhere you are, there's something that God has kept to bring you out of challenge. May your eyes see it. Yeah. Shout a better amen. Yeah. The tight you are paying, why are you paying tight? God opens you and gives you ideas to solve problems. Now, number three, covenant keys. Is trustworthiness. Trust what? Can God trust you? Can God trust you? You're sure? <laughs> Can men also trust you? Many of us give, but this is where we miss it. 
In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 19, 17 to 19, it's a child that are rich in this world that they may not be high minded, not trust of certain riches, but the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to distribute and willing to communicate. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. When the lockdown came, many Christians, inclusive, were broke. You know the reason? They were not sowing before the lockdown. So it, it, during lockdown, it showed between those who were giving and those who were not giving. It's against the time to come because God knew that the time will come when things will be tough. A giver can't be strapped in times of hardship. But you know, many of you, food to eat was difficult. If you had that problem, check well. You were not giving before that time. So when the time to come came, there was no harvest. <laughs> and let me say this to you. Don't call a poor man a dedicated Christian until he has money and is humble. That he comes to sanctuary to work every day, let him have money first. It's easy to be very dedicated when you're poor. Your true dedication will come out to see when you have money and you're still dedicated. They say, this man is a child of God. You know why? You have too, <laughs> you have too many prayer requests when you are in poverty. You see, you see, as our father is now, he's not a poor man. He goes for soul winning. So he's not saying, I'm going for soul winning, oh God, give me money. But you know, poor man can decide to go for soul winning, say, oh God, this is where I'm going. Give me a job. Okay, let him get the job. And still go for soul winning. They say this man is a child of God. <laughs> Finally, number four. The fourth covenant thing is excellence. In a world of mediocrity, do things with a touch of excellence as to prosper. Listen, children of God, you are a tailor. Don't sew close like carpenter. If you like being tomorrow's anointing service, anoint your shop, use mantle, and your food is not sweet, nobody will come. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In Philippians chapter 1 verse 10, it said that ye may approve things that are excellent. Always exceed people's expectation. Refuse to settle for mediocrity if you want lasting wealth. Stop producing inferior things. Something is cheap does not mean it has to be inferior. If you want to prosper, whatever you do, you should have a touch of Excellence is doing a common thing uncommonly well. Why do people come to live in faith? If service will start six, by six o'clock, someone's microphone, praise the Lord. It's a touch of what? Uh, you need to be in some places, you'll get angry. So when anywhere you see prosperity, there's a touch of what? But let me close with this very funny illustration because you have had too many things. You still hear many things. If there are seven eagles on a mountain, just have this picture, I'm closing. Seven eagles on a mountain and two decide to fly. How many will remain? How many say five? Hold it. I'm closing. Listen, hold it. Oh, hear me again. There are seven eagles on a mountain. Two decide to fly. How many will remain on the mountain? <laughs> you are very smart. Now hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Decision. I'm closing. Decision. Oh, I've heard about Titan. I've heard about giving. 
and you decide, decision will not make you to prosper. Until that decision is backed with practical action. Jesus said, and I close with that scripture, John 13, 17, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. If you know about tithing, you know about giving, then do it. If you like, copy all the notes, confess all the confession, do all the prayers, and you are not a giver, you will still be a pauper. There's no God forbid, you forbid stinginess. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen. You prosper by giving. I heard it from you. You stay prosperous by giving. And you continually prosper till Jesus come by giving. The day you stop giving, prosperity will also stop. Rise to your feet. Listen. I read the old Bible. I never saw where Jesus prayed for the poor. He never prayed for the poor. Read your Bible. He taught the poor. Read Matthew 11. Where he said, bless are this. Where he came to the poor. He said, and the gospel is preached to the poor. He didn't say, and Jesus prayed for the poor. So you don't need prayer. Put it to practice. Give thanks to God. <laughs>